The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC-TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I'm pleased to welcome Patty Hall, the founder of H2O for Life, a 501c3 nonprofit organization located in White Bear Lake. Uh, Patty Hall, thank you for uh, joining us today. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Tom. And I'm glad to be here. The first thing I want to ask you is kind of a broad question. In Tell me what H2O for Life is. We educate and engage and inspire youth to learn about global issues. We're focused on the global water crisis. So this would be, when you talk about engaging students, it's primarily focused then on, on water issues. We're focused on water and sanitation, and it's all about educating our youth to okay. understand the issues and take action. Yeah, it's a really important issue now because um, of what's happening with the climate issues and all of the other venues. I mean, I've been reading that some parts of the world now are really, uh, their, their uh, water programs are, are really being stressed. Is that correct? Well, absolutely. And 12 years ago, when I got into this space, uh -huh. I don't think people were talking a lot about water. No, they weren't. But recently, water is scarce in many places, not only in Africa and developing world countries, but in our own United States as well. Really? In the United States? Well, you can think of the problems in Flint, Michigan. California uh -huh. just experienced a huge drought. That's right. The Colorado River is really under peril, and there's just a lot of issues going on that we need to pay more attention to our water. The, the, the Colorado River? Colorado River no longer even gets down to the Gulf of Mexico. It turns into a mud pile at the end of that. Uh -huh. Too much water is diverted to yeah. Phoenix, to Tucson, to Vegas, to other places yeah. because we just don't have enough water resources. Well, being such a major issue, how do you actually deal with it? I mean, how do you get your arms around something that that's, a, that, that's such a mega problem? Well... I don't know if you know Paul Steinhauser, who's also a local White Bear Lake community member, but he made a statement one time that I thought was really powerful, and he said, conservation is always the right thing to do. And I think part of that is we need to educate this next generation of youth coming up to understand that simple actions can change the way we look at water and the way we protect our water resources for future generations. And you think that, that, edu that, you, and you think that voluntary conservation efforts can actually work? I don't think it can hurt and I think it will change the way that we treat water and the way we respect water because we're really over users of water and can do better. Yeah, I, I mean I agree with that. Now some of the things that uh, H2O for Life does in our local community, uh, give me a couple of examples of that. Okay, well a few years ago when White Bear Lake was really at its low level, Yes. And it was a very contentious issue in the, in the White Bear area That's with right. those that were fighting against what we should do to the lake and other p factions that came in. And we were approached by many constituencies in, within White Bear Lake that wanted to do something about the water shortage, mm -hmm. the water level in White Bear Lake. So we worked with the school districts and we worked with um, the mayors in the communities to talk about what could we really do that would be a starting point for water. We were fortunate to have Senator Weger and Representative Fisher come on And their on local, board, representatives local representatives were representing the White Bear, right. uh, kind of the White Bear area. And they were able to secure some legislative funding, which allowed us to create a program called Race to Reduce, which is run by H2O for Life, so it's under our doors. Mm -hmm. But we worked with the teachers in White Bear Lake schools and Matamidi schools to develop curriculum that's aligned with standards, so it's standards-based curriculum that's embedded in classrooms so that every classroom is designed designed K through 8 by the time we're done designing this to talk about water sometime every year. Mm -hmm. The only way we're going to change behavior is if we talk about it consistently, not just once and hope that it stuck. 
Now, uh, what are, uh, when you talk about curriculum that was developed, how exactly did that get down to the local level? What are some of the things that the students actually did uh, as far as activities that focused on water conservation in our community? Well, for example, in Matamida, they, in their elementary K through five school, they had a whole day planned on environmental issues within the community. And students during that day did some water monitoring activities mm -hmm. where they actually gathered water from the lake. They did several tests to see what the quality of our water was like. They set goals of how they could reduce their local water use. The high school in Matamidae built a rain garden and the kids were responsible oh, for okay. taking care of that. And White Bear Lake had many programs going on in their schools. Um, Matoska International School had rain barrels collecting water from their roofs and the kids filled up their jugs and instead of going to the lake and taking water out of the lake for a walk for water, they carried the water from their rain barrels and ceremoniously dumped it into the lake. Oh, okay. So it was getting kids to think about it and the simple things like turning off the water when you brush your teeth. And mm -hmm. one of the um, curriculum ideas that we worked with with the EPA was to put um, water monitoring into classrooms in fourth and fifth grade where kids went home and did a household audit. They were given the tools to check to see if their toilets leaked, they measured if there were drips in their faucets, and then came back to the school and shared the results. And the amazing wow. thing was that kids said, oh, my dad decided that our toilet was leaking, so we went to the store and we got the parts we needed and now it doesn't leak. So Ooh. leaks are a huge source of water loss, and just getting people to pay attention to it, I think, really makes a difference. Yeah, because, they, again, we don't think, particularly in Minnesota, that we have a water issue. Right, right. So, and we have plentiful water. We just have to make sure that we're using it appropriately and we're taking care of it and we're not putting a lot of dirt into our stormwater system. So we have to clean water with all the debris and the plastics and things that right, we right. throw away. So, so it's it, teaching kids mm -hmm. those things. And I know you mentioned that this program is now in the curriculum of the schools, but beyond that, are, you, are, are there any other initiatives that you're looking forward to in, in keeping this... Uh, this uh, program alive in White Bear Lake? Um, well, we hope that by having the buy-in from the teachers, because the curriculum was developed in collaboration with teachers, so it wasn't okay. something that we developed and put on them. Mm -hmm. It was developed together, and so the teachers put it into the grade levels in the areas where they really thought it would stick, uh -huh. and their commitment is to do that every year, so it should okay. be embedded in their curriculum. This year we should finish 7th and 8th grade curriculum. The total design will be done K through 8. Yep. And then in the high schools we're looking more at clubs and programs and science classes that will take pieces of the conservation issue and put it in their mm -hmm. classrooms. Yeah. One of the activities we did a couple of years ago, um, and that was again due to Paul Steinhoser, who was a big environmentalist, is that he had done a TED talk at Matamidae, a TEDx talk, on um, and toilets. And what's that? Well, TEDx is a program where leaders can come speaking on topics that are set out, and they, they do a lot of study and research and do an informative speech for people in the community to learn about an issue. And Paul did a, a speech on toilets and about, and he showed seven jugs of water and said, this is seven gallons of water that our toilets used to flush this to flush this much urine. And so it's about using low-fold toilets and doing that. Mm -hmm. So we had a small grant to have high school students go out and um, go to different households and find out if people had high-flow toilets or low-flow toilets. And the local Aquarius dealer put in systems in households that had high-flow toilets to gather the amount of water that was saved over a period of time. So it was the kids gathering the data, the kids putting the data together, and then finding out what was well, saved. That's once a the real innovative um, right. program. Yeah, it was great. The kids enjoyed it, and um, we found out a lot from mm -hmm. that. Now, I want to dig digress a little bit here and uh, just ask you, first of all, what, what's your background? I was an educator for 30 years. I taught in the Moundsview School District. Okay. And on the side, I traveled a lot to Africa. My, oh, okay. My mother wanted to visit Africa, and so 20-some years ago, we went on our first trip to Kenya and went back on various mission trips, helping build health centers, delivering supplies. And I received a letter from a friend of mine right before I was going back to school one year that said, the kids in our community are dying because we don't have water. Really? Do you know anybody who could help us? And I thought about it. It would have been real easy to just say, nope, I don't know anybody. But I thought about the 800 middle school kids that I had at my school and wondered if we could do something. So mm -hmm. we introduced the program to our school. We really learned about water that year. I knew nothing about the global water crisis. Oh, you didn't? No, I had to do a lot of study. 
I did a lot of research to find out the statistics, what was happening in the world, and together with the kids, we researched it together, and the students raised $13,000 that year to help. And this is when? This when was this? This was 2006. 19... Oh, 2006. and that, I mean, that, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, the kids did a great job. And the great part was I went to visit the project at the end of the school year because we'd sent the money in the sure. middle of the year. So when I went, I was able to take photos of this wonderful project and bring those pictures back to the students at Highview Middle School. And that was the moment where I think the impact was really huge. Okay. Kids could see that they're, what they did really changed the lives for other people. Now, uh, you did this, and so how did all of these things emerge into the establishment of H2O for Life? Well, it's just like everything. You meet the right people at the right moment, and I met a gentleman um, when I was at a conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he said, wow, I didn't know kids could do such great things on such a global issue. And he said, can you get me 10 schools because I have 10 projects? So he challenged me to see if I could get 10 other teachers that would help raise funds for 10 projects. Yeah. And he said, and if you're going to do even one more project, you should become a 501c3 because then you can ask some foundations to help you with some funding. Uh -huh. So that's what we did. And that first year, we had 16 schools join us. And that first year, the schools raised over $115,000 oh for goodness. water. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So that's, we were on our way. incredible. We were on our okay. way. Go, going from uh, your uh, visit to Kenya and what you did earlier in your uh, career with H2O for Life to now, you mentioned um, some of the things that you've done locally. Um, and uh, your, uh, you, one of the things I think in your mission statement is that to make people or young people global citizens. Right. And first of all, what do you mean by that? And secondly, what are some of the other water projects that you are involved with okay. um, throughout our, um, our globe? Right. Well, as a teacher, I really saw the impact that participating in a service learning activity had on the students that mm -hmm. I was working with. Number one, 10 or 11 years ago, most of the money that was being raised by kids in schools was to buy band uniforms, to buy a new drum, to do something for the school, and we were not looking outside of our own local community doors. And kids of today are going to be in a global environment. You know, with yes. the internet and with the yes. way our world is working, they can't only live locked in by the corridors of White Bear Lake. So yeah. I think this provided an opportunity for students to realize that they really can look outside their own borders and they can really, they can make a difference without ever leaving their seats. There's not only that you have to travel someplace and that you have to spend a lot of money to get somewhere to do a global project, but you sure. can do it within your own community while raising awareness about the issue and taking the action piece. So I mm -hmm. think it really goes well together. And it connects the local issues with the global issues and I think that's what we need to be looking at is how do we have local impact and how do we have global impact and how do those two come together? And are, what are some of the other um, areas or school connections that have been made with H2O for Life that might be outside of White Bear? Well, we've engaged um, over 800 schools to work with us across the United States. And kids have raised over three point five million dollars. Are these eight hundred uh, schools worldwide? Or are they? Well, most of them are in the United States or Canada. Oh, but we okay. do because of the internet. We have international schools from all over the world that are participating. So in our you program. have eight hundred schools that might be working with communities outside of the United States. Correct. Every school that works with us chooses a partner school, and it's not always a one-to-one -one funding relationship because projects sure. are not inexpensive and every school can't raise a lot of money. But a school can choose a partner in Nicaragua and pledge to raise $500. That goes a long way to helping build that project. Well, 800 schools, I mean, that's, right. a, that's a big grassroots effort. Right, right. It's, it's been amazing to see How what How did you ever get 800 schools to participate? Well, we go to lots of conferences, we meet lots of teachers, and what we found is that we were filling a need that teachers wanted to do something globally, but you just can't dial 1-800-Mozambique and find a project. So yeah. we were finding schools, and we work with NGO partners, non-governmental organizations, that provide all our projects for us. So uh -huh. we have partners in, in, in um, Nicaragua, partners in Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, in 13 different countries that identify the projects. Sure. They're the ones that work with the local recipient community 
they plan the projects with the community and we come in and provide half the funding and the other half of the funding has to come from the local community that's receiving the project. So that means the that they're that means that they're really engaged and make they have an equity stake. They have to have some and skin make, in the game. And, and so whatever right. they do is actually going to work. It's not somebody else just doing everything right. for them. They you have know, a major they have an equity stake right. and it's success. We want kids to know that it's not that people are just yep. waiting for somebody to come give them a gift. It's yeah. just that uh, most of the areas yeah. we work are rural could, communities. Could you give me an example of maybe um, some school that you're aware of that part of this project and uh, of these 800 schools might be involved in that can just give people a snapshot sure. of, of what something, sure. has been, something has been accomplished or done? I could give you 800 stories. Okay, but I'll well, give just, you one. just give me give me one or two. That's so right. Last, yes. Last March, I um, escorted 11 high school seniors from California and two teachers to Kenya, and they were visiting the school they funded as seventh graders. So okay. from seventh through twelfth grade, they have chosen a school project every year. But we went back to a school in Kenya yeah. where they got to see what was done in that school through their efforts, and they visited a school that had a rainwater catchment tank built latrines built for the students, filtration systems in the school, and a hygiene education program so students learn that washing your hands really can make a difference and can, can change the health of your school. And so these high school girls from LA went out to Kenya and together they did a water monitoring test at the school okay. so that they could work with the kids at the school and got to communicate with them. And they got to walk to their current water, the water source that they had prior to the implementation of the project. And they saw that these kids had had to walk a mile to a stream that was a dirty, muddy stream. A mile? To get the water to bring back to school. So by providing water and sanitation on the school grounds, kids are able to stay in school. It changes their educational opportunities. It makes a big difference. So how does somebody provide a water uh, program in an area like that? I mean, do they, uh, are, are, are you involved in digging wells? Or I mean, well, how, what do they do? How do they do that? We're not involved in any of the implementation. So again, yeah. we work with non-governmental organization right. partners that know what's going to work in that area because they live there and they work there. So mm -hmm. we don't describe what we think somebody should do. They okay. tell us what's going to work for that particular yeah. school. And it might be a deep borehole well. It might be a shallow well. It might be rainwater catchment. Whatever system they want, they think sure. is going to work with the school, with the local community, is what we support through the funding. That's, that's absolutely uh that's absolutely incredible. It really is. Yeah. So, well, it was good advice from smart people that said, don't ever think you need to go out and drill okay, wells because okay. we don't know how to do it. In building a, a nonprofit organization like you did, I mean, um, and I give, you know, f for you and then for the, the, the volunteers that, that started this. Right. Um, do you have any advice on some things that, uh, that would help other nonprofits maybe? Well, when I started this, it was all through passion of uh -huh. wanting to... So that's, so passion is very was important. It. Okay. It was very important, but it was also um, starting small and taking baby steps and working on your funding sure. and putting good procedures in place. And also, I think we surrounded ourselves with good people. We mm -hmm. had good board members. We, the first employees that we hired were very yep. dedicated and you just needed to keep in, we didn't try to get too big too fast. Sure. And I think that we um, have added things that we've needed along the way. When we first did this, I didn't even have any curriculum to give to people. The first 10 schools that we did, I gave them like three sheets of paper, yeah. said, here's the statistics, here's a couple of ideas, go with it. And now we have a full K through 12 curriculum wow. on our website. So teachers have free access to materials. They, um, we build web pages for every mm -hmm. school so that they can host their project on our site. Yeah. And it's and, become a pretty big yeah, program. And, and uh, have you always been a White Bear as H2O for I Life? I have, yes. Um, H2O for Life is located in White Bear, started in White Bear. I've lived in White Bear all my life. So uh -huh. it's home to me, and we are proud to say we're the international headquarters for H2O for Life in White Bear Life. That's wonderful. And uh, have you found uh, good uh, volunteer support within our community? Absolutely. You know, White Bear is a great place to live. Um, we just finished a gala event. And our volunteers were amazing because we only have five office staff. So to put on wow. an event that's going to have 350 people show up, you just planned one. You know that it takes a lot of people to make those things happen. Mm -hmm. And we've had great volunteers, but I also consider every teacher that we work with our supreme volunteers. Wonderful. They make the work happen. Okay, so if somebody is interested in learning more about 
H2O for Life or contributing to H2O for Life, uh, how can they go about doing that? Would you give your phone number and your well, we have a uh, website. email address? It's very easy. Um, it's and w website. www.h2oforlifeschools.org. And it's H2O-F-O-R, lifeschools.org. Okay. And everything is on our website. There's everything that anybody needs to get started and all of our phone numbers on the website. And we'd be happy to hear from any teacher Wonderful. or any youth that wants to learn more of how they can be helpful. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Patty Hall, for joining me today. Um, and I appreciated you being here. Thank well, you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Much. Appreciate it. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, now I have a quick announcement about an important chamber community happening that's going to take place. It's scheduled for the month of November on the 13th of November. The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce will hold its annual legislative reception. It's scheduled from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at Tria Restaurant in North Oaks. There's absolutely no charge to attend and appetizers will be served. For more information, visit our website at www.whitebearchamber.com. Thank you very much. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.